I'm studying for a major um, test in English. It's on poetry terms. Limerick. Limerick is a type of poem. It's always light and humorous. There's usually five predominantly anapestic lines rhyming, four lines that rhyme and that are humorous. Haku. Haku is an image poem of the, the, China, the Japanese uh, made. It's a Japanese fixed poetic form. Uh, it usually has a central image and a few lines. It's kind of like a word picture. Epigram. Epigram is a brief, pointed, and witty poem. Uh, it's usually typically polished bits of compressed irony, satire, or paradox. Um, example, like a fish hook in a human eye, or bravery runs in my family. <clears throat> okay, a metaphysical conceit. It's um, particularly a type of poetic metaphor of the sort. Sort. It's an uncon conventional metaphor. It's an unexpected metaphor. Unusual, unusual but striking analogies between things that seem very un, uh, unlike. And it's comparing to this world and to an outside of the world, um, beyond the physical world, like you are the potter and I am the clay. That is metaphysical conceit. And uh, I made an extra one. Metaphysical conceit. Just remember, a comparison beyond our world to give an idea. Anthropomorphic. Um, it's to be human-like, um, having human-like characters in something that is not human. And a dramatic monologue is one person speaking in a poem directed to a particular listener. An example is a mother to son poem by Langston Hughes or My Last Duchess. Um, it, it's, it's speaking to a character. A poem directed to the reader or listener. Rhyme scheme. Pattern of rhymes. The pattern of rhyming lines in a poem or in a verse of a poem. Um, like A, B, C, B. At the end of line having the same sound. It's a pattern of rhymes. Quatrant. Four line stanza can have various meters. An ode poem. Written in dignified subject or in honor or dedication in a serious way of something. That is ode poem. Okay. Um, a hero heroic couplet usually has two lines rhymed with a bit of wit and wisdom. Okay. And then um, a caesura is a pause within a line and is indicated by a double vertical line. You'll see the double vertical lines and that just means you need to pause within that line. And this idea came from the Anglo-Saxons. Okay, a dactyl. Um, it has uh, a metrical foot consisting of one long and two short syllables or of one stress and two unstressed syllable, syllables. So one long, two short. Stre one stress, two unstressed. Um, an elegy poem. It's uh, a lyric poem to commemorate someone who is dead. And it's usually serious, um, med a meditative poem about the person and melancholy thoughts. Okay, a blank verse uh, is a type of poem. A line of poetry in five unrhymed iambic pentameter which means five meters. Example, Shakespeare's sonnets and, uh, was written uh, as a blank verse. Um, Christopher Marlowe started the idea of the term blank verse. Okay. All right, let's see. Okay, we have ballad stanza. That's a type of poem. It tells a story like legends using a poetic rhythm, telling factual things in rugged form. Okay, it's telling a story. All right. That is a type of poem. Um, carpe diem. It means to seize the day, live it up, enjoy the day. And then um, sonnet. Okay, that is a type of poem. Um, there's two different kinds of sonnets, Italian and English. Okay. Um, all sonnets usually have 
14 lines and um, the, the English sonnets have three quadrants and end in a couplet. The Italian has the octave and the sesset, which means six lines. Um, we're, we're more known of the English sonnets written by Shakespeare, as I said before. Um, a sonnet usually has first eight lines and then last six sesset lines, okay? But remember, uh, all sonnets have 14 lines, and there's two different kinds, Italian and English, okay? And we've already done this one. All right, rhythm. Rhythm refers to the recurrence of stressed and unstressed patterns of sound. It's a pattern of reoccurrence sound. That is rhythm. Repetition is the act of saying or repeating something in a poem. A pragmatist or pragmatism. Practical approach to problems and affairs. Pragmatism. Okay. Um, a paradox or parody poem is usually a humorous, playful mocking of a literary work. Um, sometimes it's sarcastic, but it's playful and even respectful, respectful most of the time. Um, it's a statement that initially appears to be self-contradictory, uh, a paradox. It's just a humorous, playful mocking of another work. Okay. All right, and then um, synodage, an object or action in literary work that means more than itself. And it stands for something beyond itself. It's a figure of speech in which part of something is used to signify the whole. Okay. All right, next. Next is oxymoron, a condensed form of a paradox or parody in which two contradictory words or phrases that are used together. They're, they, they're the ops, opposite of each other, but they are working together. Okay. Apostrophe in the poetic terms. It's addressing something that is non-human as if it could reply. Um, say if uh, you're addressing someone long dead and you're talking to them, it's like to Julius Caesar. Um, or like to your car named Bessie. You're addressing something in a non-human as, as if it can reply. Apostrophe. Personification. It's giving something a human characteristic to an object that is not. Personification. Onomatopoeia. It's the creation of words that imitate sounds or natural sounds like uh, whoosh or buzz or splash. Um, it's naming a thing or action in a vocal imitation sound. The creation of words that imitate sounds are natural sounds. Onomatopoeia. Anagrams is words made from letters of other words to evoke feeling. Um, okay, so anagram, words made from letters from other words, like slow can be turned into owls. That's an anagram. Vernacular, actually writing the way people speak. It's their dialect. Mark Twain was the first to write the way people sound vernacular. Okay. Um, I am. It's a unit of rhythm in poetry that consists of one syllable that is not accented or stressed followed by one syllable that is accented or stressed. So stress, unstressed, stress, unstressed. That is the rhythm of I am. Tactile, relating to the sense of touch, perceptible by touch. Troatic rhythm is an accent syllable followed by an unaccented one. Troatic rhythm. And a pestic rhythm. A metrical foot consisting of two short syllables followed by one long syllable. Two short, one long. And a pestic rhythm. Dactyl rhythm. A metrical foot consisting of one long and two short syllables like three, like a three beat waltz. Dactyl Dactylic rhythm, a metrical foot consisting of one long and two short syllables, as in the rhythm of a three-beat waltz. Waltz. Um, a troche is a metrical foot consisting of one long syllable followed by one short syllable or of one stressed syllable. Troche. Okay. 
and a pass is a metrical foot consisting of two short syllables followed by one long or two unstressed syllables followed by one stress. So it's either two a short, one long, or two unstressed, one stressed. A line that comes that contradicts, whoops, a line that contradicts the first part is an antithesis. A time for war and a time for feast, an example, um, is an antithesis. <clears throat> a line that contradicts the first part, okay? All right, we must know the Greek muses and poetry. It's from mythology. It's the inspiration of poetry. They are the, the nine muses are the daughters of Zeus and memory. Zeus was the father, memory was the parents. It's where we get the word memory. Muses rules over different arts. It's where we get the words amusement, music, museum. It's where we get those words. The nine muses are Calliope is the music of epic poetry, C-A-L-L-I-O-P-E. Clio, C-L-I-O, is the muse of history. Euter, E-U-T-E-R-P-E, -E, lyric poetry. It's meant to be sung of the lyric, lyric poetry. Uh, Melpony, Melpomony, is the muse of tragedy. And that's spelled M-E-L-P-O-M-E-N-E. -E -E. Okay, that's the first four of the nine muses. We're continuing on the nine muses. Uh, Terpsichore, it's a muse of dance. T-E-R-P-S-I-C-H-O-R-E. -E. Erato, E-R-A-T-O. Erato is a muse of romantic poetry. Terpsichore, muse of dance. Erato, muse of romantic poet poetry. Polyhymnia, P-O-L-Y-H-Y-M-N-I-A, is a muse of sacred song. Urania, U-R-A-N-I-A, -A, Urania, muse of astronomy and the stars. Thalia, T-H-A-L-I-A, -A, is a muse of comedy. Okay? Let's go over those one more time. The Greek nine muses. Calliope, music, muse of epic poetry. Clio, Muse of History, Uter, Lyric Poetry, that's meant to be sung, Melpomene, Muse of Tragedy, um, Terpsichore, Muse of Dance, Erato, Muse of Romantic Poetry, Polyhymnia, Muse of Sacred Song, Urania, Muse of Astronomy, and the Stars, Thalia, Muse of Comedy. Okay. Alright, next term is couplet, a pair of rhyme lines that may or may not constitute a separate stanza in a poem. All right, Shakespeare sonnets ended in rhymed couplets. <clears throat> Free verse is a type of poem. It has no metrical pattern. And Walt Whitman is the first known American writer to use free verse. It doesn't have a metrical pattern, free verse. <clears throat> Extended metaphor. Uh, it's an organization or, or it organizes around a comparison of unlike things. Okay, extend the metaphor. A hyperbole is above average. It's an exaggerating for effect like, I told you to do that a million times. That's a hyperbole. It's an exaggeration for effect. Allusion, A-L-L-U-I, no, A-L-L-U-S-I-O-N, allusion. A reference to something from earlier literature that the audience expected to recognize and already know, like the Bible or mythology or Shakespeare. It's a reference to something that the audience already knows. Illusion. Metaphor is a comparison of two unlike things given in an explanation or worded in a poem or, or story like a simile. But it's comparing two unlike things. A simile is to be like as something. Simile, S I M. I L E. Okay. All right. William Blake uh, was a famous poet writer. Let's see. Free verse. Uh, we've already done that one. We'll do it again. No set magical pattern in poetry. Okay. Uh, Walt Whitman was the first poet of free verse. We've done that before. He's a famous poet. Thomas Hardy is a famous poet. 
John Keats is the writer of Ode on the Grecian Yearn, 1819. Um, Cavalier poet, um, it was Robert Herrick, he was from England. Tone, all right, tone is a poetry term. It means the author's attitude toward the subject matter he's writing. It's the mood and the color, the attitude of the author, tone. Here's some more Victorian poets. Um, Alfred Lord Tennyson, he wrote Crossing the Bar, um, The Death of the Ball Tourette Gunner by Gerald. Alliteration, and that is A-L-L-I-T-E-R-A-T-I-O-N, alliteration. The first letter of each word begins with the same letter, um, like see, saw, say, some. It's alliteration. First letter of each word begins with the same letter. It's the repetition of initial consonants, uh, consonant sounds across the poem, alliteration. Okay. Image, a word picture. It's a painting pictures with words. A word picture, image. Assonance, A-S-S-O-N-A-N-C-E. It's a repetition of vowel sounds that are uh, similar sounds in the vowels, repetition of that. Stanza is a type of poem, a division with a poem, stanza. Refrain is a repetition of words or lines in each stanza. Um, a didactic, didactic, is any literature written for the sake of instructions like fables, satire, allegory, parables. Fable is a short story that usually is about animals and that is intended to teach a lesson. Fable. Okay. All right. Um, satire is a way of using humor to show that someone or something is foolish. Satire is humor that shows the weakness or bad quality of a person. Movie, book, government, society. All right. It's satire. Okay. Allegory. Hang on just a second. Allegory is a story in which the characters and events are symbols that stand for ideas about human life or for a political or historical situation. Allegory. A-L-L-E-G-O-R-Y. A story in which the characters and events are symbols that stand for ideas. Parables is a short story that teaches a moral or spiritual lesson. Parable. Renaissance is a rebirth of creative forms brought out from culture, Renaissance. Lorraine Hainsbury um, uh, is, was um, a black woman author, and she wrote a play about a black family called Raisin in the Sun, okay? All right, and she also was the first uh, black woman writer to be recognized. And of course, the Harlem Renaissance, Renaissance Renaissance, Harlem Renaissance in the 1920s. And the poets during, famous poets during that time was Langston Hughes, Georgia Douglas Johnson, she was a black woman, Claude McKay, and County Cullen. All right, in the boroughs of New York, uh, we're learning that so you understand the districts of New York because Harlem is a district. Um, the, bor the boroughs of New York is voting districts of New York City. Each district has its own mayor. You got the boroughs here, Bronx, Queens, Staten Island, Manhattan, Brooklyn, and Harlem, and also Spanish Harlem. And the definition of poetry. We must know that definition. Hang on just a second. Poetry is literature in verse. It is in particular a verse writing of great beauty, emotion, or intensity, or profound insight. Poetry. Poetry is literature and verse that's showing beauty, emotion, or intensity, intensity, or profound insight. And symbol is in poetry is symbols in poetry are objects used to represent abstract ideas. Symbols in poetry are objects used to represent abstract ideas. They are objects that play a key role in the narrative and represent an idea. Okay, that's all your words for your test. Good luck.